Greetings everyone and welcome back. It's been quite a while since my last video. Things have been fairly busy in this part of town, but unfortunately uh, I haven't been able to keep up with videos and articles on my website. So hopefully I'll get around to creating content more frequently from here on out. At least I'll, I'll try my best to do that. First of all, I want to thank all of my subscribers for your support and your kind words in the comments. Much appreciated. But anyway, I just wanted to make a quick video for this important day in the church calendar, the Feast of the Annunciation. And also, as I'm sure you are aware, today was the day that Pope Francis consecrated the people of Russia, together with the people of Ukraine, and all of humanity to the Immaculate Heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Whether this was in line with Our Lady's request at Fatima is, of course, a huge matter of contention within the Church, uh, which it has been for several decades. Uh, and as this is a huge topic that could be discussed for hours on end, I decided to try and keep it condensed and to break this video into three parts. So the first part is a more serious statement, which will be nice and short, so bear with me. In the second part, I am going to give some personal commentary on the consecration itself, as it occurred in St. Peter's Basilica in Rome earlier today. And in the third part, I want to conclude with today's Gospel reading. St. Luke's account of the Annunciation, and leave you with another book recommendation uh, that might be of interest to you. The Church, at least within living memory, seems to be the most divided she has ever been since the disgraceful Western schism of the 14th century. It appears that whenever something faith-related enters the public arena, arguments, infighting, and upset abound within an already heavily divided an increasingly uncharitable church. Members of the church, I should say. It is the members of the church who are upset, divided, and in some cases uncharitable. The church herself, however, which was founded by our Lord Jesus Christ almost 2,000 years ago, is by definition one holy, Catholic, and apostolic. And no man, be he a sinner or a saint, is ever going to change that. In relation to today's consecration, I do hope and pray that it will have the desired effect and that many graces, or even one grace at least, will flow from it. However, I fear that it will nevertheless, and indeed already has, proven to be yet another cause of contention and division within Holy Mother Church. On one end you have those who were sceptical and cynical from the moment this consecration was announced. And on the other hand, you have those who without question saw in this consecration the long-awaited answer to their prayers. Within both groups, you have those for whom Pope Francis can do no right, and those for whom Pope Francis can do no wrong. What I personally think and hold about the current pontificate is irrelevant. If he is the validly elected Pope, love him, forgive him, and pray for him. If he is not the validly elected Pope, love him, forgive him, and pray for him. Church teaching is clear on the role, office, power, and responsibility of the successor of St. Peter, the Bishop of Rome, the Vicar of Christ, and so all those who claim membership of Christ's Holy Church by virtue of their baptism, from Sede Vacantists to Papalatrists, from hardcore Latin traditionalists to softcore liberal modernists, however convinced and well-meaning they might be, would do well to refer to the Church's own doctrine, infallible and unchangeable, before voicing their own personal opinions in public, and thereby only adding to the confusion and sowing further division among the children of God. Our time would be better spent reading the Bible, studying the Catechism, and praying the Rosary. <laughs> now, with that out of the way, let us move to the consecration ceremony itself, which was led by Pope Francis in St. Peter's Basilica uh, this af afternoon. These are all just my own personal opinions on the event, based off of memory. I haven't rewatched any of it since, so there may be many, few, bits and pieces that I missed or remember incorrectly, so apologies in advance for that. Also, you might very well disagree with what I have to say, and that's fine. This isn't dogma, it's not scripture, it's just an opinion. So take it or leave it, uh, just don't be too harsh in the comments. Thank you. <laughs> we'll start off with the layout and decorations. At least from what I could see, there was nothing blatantly pagan, blasphemous or contentious in sight. The only thing I personally felt a little uneasy about was the crucifix and the way in which our Lord was depicted on it. I don't know who the artist was, or when it was made, or why this particular one was chosen. 
if it were up to me, I would have chosen a different one. But again, that's just my own opinion. By the way, I watched it on the Vatican Media YouTube channel with English commentary. The translations and commentary, unfortunately I can't remember the name of, of the lady commentator, uh, but they were good. They were quite good. And most importantly, I could hear in her voice that she was a woman of faith. She believed in what was going on and also invited the faithful to practice their faith, go to confession and to read the catechism. The statue of Our Lady of Fatima was beautiful and an honour to the immaculate nature of Our Blessed Mother. I did appreciate Pope Francis' reverence before the statue, both when he prayed the, the consecration prayer and stood right in front of the statue, touched Our Lady's feet and then blessed himself. The placing of flowers before Our Lady's feet with the two children, I automatically thought of Saints Francisco and Jacinta, was also a lovely touch. Another thing I did like was Pope Francis' homily. There will, of course, be those who will find fault with it and will point out some irregularities. However, based on the English translation, which I heard, uh, from what I could tell, it was solid teaching. The Pope spoke of the Annunciation as a real historical event. He emphasised the fact that Our Lady was conceived without sin and sinless her whole life, that she gave her fiat to the will of God, which in turn enabled the Incarnation and brought about the redemption of mankind. I very much appreciated his invitation to, uh, to confession and that confessions took place during the ceremony. Unfortunately, it is a sacrament that has been greatly undermined and sometimes even frowned upon in many parts of the world, especially in the West. So hopefully this event will also spark greater love, understanding and appreciation of this beautiful sacrament, the gift of reconciliation. Now, there were also some things other than the choice of crucifix that I didn't like so much. Uh, covering up the mouths and noses of the choir was one of them. It was a long ceremony, and the hymns, beautifully sung by the way, were not easy. And I could see that especially the younger boys did not look all too comfortable. Also, behaviour of the lay participants after the consecration was not exemplary. No different from many of our own parishes here in Ireland, uh, people soon forgot where they were. There was a lot of chatting and laughing right in front of the altar, and many including priests and nuns, went up to the statue to take photos and selfies. Now, I know that this, is, uh, this was a special occasion and will be a unique and cherished moment and memory in the lives of all those who were present, but piety and holy reverence are virtues that should not be dismissed lightly, especially after going to confession only moments before. With regards to the consecration itself, yes, I am aware that some people have raised concerns over the wording of a specific part uh, in the prayer, terra da cielo, earth of heaven, or earth of the sky, or something like that. I was trying to listen out for that part during the consecration, as I was watching it live, but due to the English translator and another distraction that occurred in the room I was in right at that moment, of course, I wasn't able to make out if the Pope said Queen of Heaven uh, or something else. Uh, Queen of Heaven was the version that is written in the English English translation of the prayer. Perhaps you might be able to comment on that in the comments below. Uh, in relation to the phrase itself, Earth of Heaven, or whatever, uh, I have never heard that before, and would also lean towards the suspicious side if that was used, and if there is no, uh, no acceptable explanation as to why this phrase was used. Right, okay, I think that's all I wanted to mention, at least for this particular video. So let's move on to the last part, uh, which I believe is a good way to begin, celebrate and close the special and solemn day in salvation history. Namely, by reading St. Luke's account of the Annunciation to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Found in Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 to 38, you'll note that it's a fairly short passage. Short, but nevertheless of indescribable importance for us and the whole world. For this was the moment that holy moment in an otherwise insignificant town, village, called Nazareth, 2023 years ago, in which the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The Almighty and ever-living God, creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, became man and came to earth in order to redeem us from our sins and lead us into everlasting life. This was the moment in which Jesus, true God and true man, the promised Messiah, the descendant of David, the Redeemer of the world, came to earth in the form of a little babe who would grow in wisdom, 
age and grace before God and man until that day on which he gave up his life out of love for us as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth unto a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary. And he went in unto her and said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. And she was troubled at his word and asked herself what manner of salutation this might be. And the angel said to her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favour before God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and shalt bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God shall give to him the throne of David his father, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob for ever. And of his reign there shall be no end. And Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing that I know not man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit shall come upon thee, and the might of the Most High shall overshadow thee. Therefore the Holy One to be begotten shall be called Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, thy kinswoman, she also hath conceived a son in her old age, and she, who was called barren, is in her sixth month. For naught shall be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done to me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Our Lady of Fatima, pray for us. If you recall, I made a video at the end of January with some book recommendations. Of course, I have entire bookshelves full of books, which I would highly recommend. But I chose those ones in particular for the purpose of that video. However, here's another book I would highly recommend. Uh, it's a collection of 15 encyclicals by Pope Leo XIII, perhaps one of the greatest and best popes we have ever had. Again, that's my, my own opinion. But this book, a collection of church teaching, is definitely a must read. The subjects of these encyclicals are as wide ranging as they are illuminating. He talks about the evils of society, Christian philosophy, Christian marriage, Christians as citizens, Freemasonry, socialism and capitalism, and perhaps his most famous encyclical, Rerum Novarum, study of Holy Scripture, the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Eucharist, and much more. So again, that's the, the Leonine Encyclicals, a collection of Pope Leo XIII's most indispensable encyclicals. And if you're looking for something to help you navigate the Bible, in particular the Old Testament, again I would refer you to my own book, Inspired and Inerrant, A New Guide to the Old Testament, available in paperback and Kindle edition on Amazon. Or if you're, look, uh, if, you're looking, if you're residing in Ireland, you can contact me via my website and I will try and get one to you. Links in the description below. And finally, sorry, this is the last announcement, my next novel, the second part in the Taraxicum trilogy is almost ready and will hopefully be published shortly after Easter. More updates to follow. And with that, thank you for watching, and I hope you got something useful out of this video, and with the help of God, I will see you, or rather, you will see me, in the next video. Take care, and God bless.